Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Hunter Robertson. I'm a member of the DISC team, one of several groups engaged by the HIV AIDS Bureau, or HAB, to provide training and technical assistance to recipients and providers for the RSR. Today's webinar is presented by Chris Vander Kay from Ryan White Data Support, the experts on Ryan White reporting requirements, and myself representing the DIS team's work with client level data. Chris will provide an overview of the step by step instructions for completing the RSR recipient report, including modifying contracts and using the GCMS. Recipients will also be able to obtain an understanding of the RSR workflow process. Throughout the presentation, we will reference some resources that we think are important. To help you keep track of these and to make sure you have access to them immediately, my colleague Isia is chatting out a link right now to the slides, um, which includes all the resources that we're gonna mention in today's webinar. At any time during the presentation, you'll be able to send us questions using the question function on your settings on the bottom of your screen. You'll also be able to ask questions directly live at the end of the presentation. You can ask questions live by clicking the raise hand button on your settings and my colleague Isia will conference you in. And before we get started, I'm gonna answer one of the most commonly asked questions about the recording. The recording of today's webinar will be available on the Target HIV website within one week of the webinar. The slides are already available to you to access on Target HIV using the link that EC had just chatted out. Please note that these slides are not 508 compliant, but we will follow up with all registrants in about two weeks when the 508 compliant slides and written question and answer are posted. Today's webinar is supported by the organization shown on the slide and the contents are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of, nor an endorsement by, the Health Resources and Services Administration, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or the U.S. government. Now I'd like to turn the webinar over to Chris. Take it away. Thanks, Hunter, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us. In today's webinar, I will be going over how to complete the 2023 RSR recipient report. I will start by having an introduction to the RSR recipient report, including general background information and who should be completing it. We will then move on to accessing the RSR recipient report. I will then show you how to review your contracts using the grantee contract management system or GCMS and go over the various sections of the recipient report that need to be completed. We will then look at how to validate and certify the recipient report. And to wrap up, we will go over the RSR submission timeline and the various technical assistance resources available to you. Before I begin with an overview of the RSR, I would like to make everyone aware of the GCMS instruction manual, which is available on the Target HIV website. This will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to add any additional or missing contracts you may need for your recipient report. Also, the 2023 RSR instruction manual is available on the Target HIV website. The RSR manual is an invaluable resource that can be used when completing your report. The RSR manual covers the information outlined in this webinar today and I strongly recommend looking over it before you complete your RSR. Both hyperlinks on this slide will take you to the respective manual pages. Before we begin today's presentation on the RSR recipient report, I am going to pass the presentation to Isia from the DISC team to launch the first poll question for today. Thanks, Chris. Um, so I went ahead and launched that first poll. And so for this one, the question is, is this your first time working on the RSR recipient report? And the options are, yes, this will be my first time working on the RSR. No, I've worked on the RSR once or twice before. Or no, I've worked on the RSR three times or more. We already have a really great response rate. We have about 60% participation. 
I'm going to give folks just a few more moments. See our responses are slowing down a bit. All right, final call. And I'm going to go ahead and close out the poll. All right, Chris, so it looks like 33% indicated that this is their first time working on the RSR. 30% uh, said they've worked on the RSR once or twice before, and then 37% said they've worked on the RSR three times or more. Great. Uh, thanks, Isia. Yeah, so today's presentation is both a great walkthrough, if this is your first time completing the RSR recipient report, as well as a good refresher if you've completed the recipient report in the past. Now let's continue today's presentation by reviewing some of the background information about what the RSR recipient report is and who completes it. The Ryan White Services Report, or RSR, follows the process shown here on this slide. Let's take a minute to go through the steps. So direct grant recipients from HAB will add or review their contracts in the GCMS making sure they have a contract listed for each organization funded by their grant award during the reporting period. Those contracts will populate their RSR recipient report, which they will then certify. This is step one in the RSR reporting process and is what we will be going over in more detail today. Once the recipient has certified their recipient report, that information will then help generate an RSR provider report for each of their providers to submit. Providers will enter basic information about their program as well as their client level data file into their RSR provider reports and submit. Once an RSR provider report has been submitted, the recipient will then review their provider's data and either accept it or return it back to the provider for changes. There are two sections of the recipient report, the general information section and the program information section. The general information section displays basic information about the recipient organization. This information is pre-populated from the EDHBs. However, if there are any updates or changes, they can be made in this section of the report. The other section of the recipient report is the program information section. This is where you will see a list of all the organizations your agency has indicated to have provided Ryan White services for the reporting period. Recipients will be able to look over and verify the accuracy of services listed for each organization in case there is information that is missing or that needs to be changed. More detail about both of these sections will be provided further on in the presentation. So how many recipient reports does an organization need to complete? If you are a grant recipient, your agency will submit one recipient report for each grant received. And for those of you who are new to the Ryan White program and the RSR, the definition of a recipient is an organization that receives Ryan White program funding directly from HAB. Recipients can either provide direct client services themselves, which would classify them as a recipient provider, distribute the funds to other providers, or a combination of both. So if we look at the example on our slide here, let's say that the grant recipient, in this case, a county health center, received a Part C grant and a Part D grant directly from HAB. Because they receive these two grants, they will then complete a Part C recipient report and a Part D recipient report. To put it simply, they will complete two separate recipient reports containing the grant information for each respective grant. Now, before moving on to the next section of today's presentation, I am going to pass the presentation back to Isia to launch our first quiz of the day. Thanks, Chris. I just launched the first quiz, and for this, the question is, if an agency receives Part C funding directly from HAB and EHE funding from another recipient, how many recipient reports will that agency need to complete? 
Um, so the options here are zero recipient reports, one recipient report, or two recipient reports. We just reached over a little over 50% participation. So I'm just going to give folks a few more moments to see if anyone else wants to participate. And final call number four, first question. All right, so I'm sharing the responses now. So Chris, it looks like 2% to people um, chose zero recipient reports, 49% indicated one recipient report, and then 48% chose two recipient reports. Thanks, Isia. So the correct answer there would be just one recipient report. And that's because the agency is receiving their Part C grant uh, funding directly from HAB. However, they would not need to complete a recipient report for that EAG funding because that is coming from a completely diff different agency and they're not actually receiving that directly from HAB. So now that we know who should be completing an RSR recipient report, we can move on to how you access your recipient report. The first step to accessing the recipient report is to access the correct login portal on the HRSA Electronic Handbooks, or EHBs. Recipients will use the Applicant Grantee Login link on the grants.hrsa.gov website page shown here. On the following page, you'll be directed to login.gov. This is a change for this year's EHB's login process that recipients will have to go through when accessing the EHB's. Go ahead and click the login button here. Next, you will enter your login.gov credentials and select sign in. You will also be prompted to put in your two-factor authentication on the following page. Once you have done so, this will then take you to the EHB's homepage. From the EHB's homepage shown here, your next step will be to hover, hover over the Grants tab at the top. From the drop-down menu, Select Work on Performance Report under the Submissions header. This will then take you to the Submissions All page with a list of this year's performance reports, as well as previous years. On the bottom of the Submissions All page, under Submission Name, locate your most recent RSR submission. Once you've located the recipient report you wish to work on, select the Start button listed under the Options header. If you've already begun working on your RSR, this link will instead say Edit. After clicking the link, you'll be taken to your RSR recipient report inbox. Depending on your browser settings, this page may load in a new window. We've now successfully navigated to the RSR inbox but before you begin your recipient report, we highly recommend you ensure your contracts your agency has entered for the year 2023 are complete and accurate in the GCMS. To help get a better understanding of what I mean by contracts, uh, let's begin by reviewing what the GCMS is. The Grantee Contract Management System, or GCMS, is a data storage system for recipients' Rye White contract information. Information about a recipient's contracts are entered into the GCMS and maintained in this one place to decrease the data entry burden. From this contract information, multiple data reports, such as the PTR or allocations report, the EHE triannual report, and the RSR, are populated with the information entered in the GCMS. Within the GCMS, you'll be able to add new contracts as well as modify, copy, or delete existing ones. For your 2023 RSR recipient report, all Ryan White and Ryan White related funded services for your providers will be pulled directly from the GCMS. 
This will include any contract that overlaps with the 2023 calendar year. So if you look on the example on this slide, let's say that we fund a county health department for services, and we therefore have two contracts for them in the GCMS. We can see that these, this agency has these two contracts that dip into the 2023 calendar year with a contract period from May 1st to April 30th. These dates entered in your contracts are based on the budget period listed on your notice of award. The RSR recipient report will then import contract information from both contracts shown here because both contain information from the year 2023. Essentially, if a contract is within the year 2023, it will import those listed services for that provider into the 2023 RSR recipient report. As a reminder, the GCMS is available year round, which allows recipients to regularly review and update contract information. Contracts for Ryan White recipients should already be in the system by your agency before the completion and submission of the PTR or allocations report. As a note, Part B supplemental PTRs are not due until the end of December so contracts may not yet be complete for Part B supplemental recipients. Although these contracts have been added by you or someone else within your agency, you should still review them to ensure the data reported are still correct. There may have been contract changes since those reports were submitted. For a more in-depth overview of the GCMS, I highly recommend looking at the Completing the GCMS webinar and the GCMS instruction manual on the Target HIV website, both of which I have linked on this slide. While I won't be going over the process of adding or modifying contracts in the GCMS, I did want to quickly show you how to navigate to the correct page to be able to review your contracts and make changes if needed. So back on the RSR inbox page, we're going to click the search contracts button on the left navigation panel. Clicking on search contracts will take you straight to the GCMS, showing the page displayed on this slide. Here we can see a list of different search fields that we can use to locate our agency's contracts, including the organization name, registration code, and contract dates. Your grant number will be auto-populated in the grant number search field. And if you search using a start and end date range for the 2023 calendar year, our results will only include contracts that were funded at any time during 2023 with this grant. However, you can limit or expand your search by including more or less information in the search fields. If at any time you need assistance while navigating through the GCMS, please reach out to us at Ryan White Data Support and we can help you out. Our contact information will be shown at the end of this presentation. So now that you are finished looking through your contracts and made any corrections if needed, it is time for the next step, creating and completing the RSR recipient report. To create the recipient report, you will need to navigate back to the RSR recipient report inbox, which can be done at any time by clicking the recipient report link on the left navigation bar under the inbox header. On this page, you will see your 2023 RSR recipient report. Go ahead and click the create envelope icon on the right side of your screen to begin working on the recipient report. If you have already started your recipient report, this icon will instead say open. Once you click create, you'll be taken to the first section of the recipient report, the general information page. You must provide a, provide a response for every field with a red asterisk. 
Start by filling in any missing address or organization information not pre-populated already in the web system. For question three, put the contract contact information of the person responsible for the recipient report submission. For this question, please enter the name of the person who is completing the report, as this is the contact information that we'll use if we have any questions about your RSR submission. For Ryan White Part C and D recipients, there will be an additional fourth question on the general information page. Question four asks you to indicate whether your agency received a minority AIDS initiative designation during the reporting period. If your agency did receive MAI funding, specify the most recent percentage designation for the reporting period. In case you're unsure of where to find this information, it can be found on your notice of award. And again, this question is for Part C and D recipients only. Once you have made updates and completed this page, go ahead and click the Save button in the bottom right corner. The next section of the recipient report is the Program Information section. Go ahead and click the Program Information tab on the left navigation panel to get there. On the Program Information page, you will see a list of the agencies that your organization has a contract with for the reporting period. To the left of each contract is an Expand icon. Clicking on the Expand icon will display all Ryan White funded services and Ryan White related funded services for this provider. All this information is populated from the GCMS. So if you are missing any providers in this list or need to modify any of the services, you will need to return to the GCMS and edit the associated contracts there. In the table on the right, you'll see the exempt and exemption justification columns. To exempt a provider that meets the exemption criteria, simply check this box. This then opens the exemption justification text field where you must explain why this provider is exempt. If you are unsure if your provider qualifies for an exemption, I highly recommend checking out the RSR reporting updates and best practices webinar that was presented a little while ago that is available on the Target HIV website. You can also find a full list of the exemption criteria in the RSR instruction manual. Please note that exempting a provider does not exempt the recipient from collecting and reporting that provider's data on their behalf. Recipients must make sure that exempted providers' data are still reported to HAB. If you made any changes to your contracts in the GCMS after starting your recipient report, you'll see this yellow warning banner at the top of the page. You can either select the agency's name in blue to synchronize contracts individually, or you can select synchronize all to synchronize all changes at once. For our example today, we'll go ahead and select the Synchronize All button here. This will open the synchronization window where you'll see any contract modifications you made in the GCMS. The list will include any service categories added or deleted and those that were left unchanged. If the information is correct, click the Synchronize button at the bottom right of the screen. We are then taken back to the Program Information section with our changes added to the report. Make sure when you go to submit your recipient report that you do not see that yellow warning banner at the top of this page, which means you have pending contract changes. Please note that you can minimize the amount of time you spend going back and forth between the recipient report and the GCMS if you ensure your contracts are set up correctly in the GCMS 
before you create your recipient report. We have now finished reviewing our contracts and the various sections of the report, which means it is time for the final step for completing the recipient report, validating and certifying. Once your recipient report is complete and correct, you must validate your report by selecting Validate in the navigation panel on the left. The following page will tell you that your request has been scheduled and may take several minutes to generate the validation report. Allow the system to validate for a few minutes and then refresh the page by selecting Validate again on the navigation panel or by refreshing the page manually in your web browser. If your request has been completed, you will see your validation results. However, if it is not yet complete, continue waiting and then refresh the page again. After refreshing, if you receive this congratulations message, then your report is ready to move forward and be certified. Alternatively, you may see a table with validations to correct. The RSR recipient report only has a few validation messages that can populate, and they are all classified as errors, meaning they must be corrected before you can certify your report. So if you receive a validation error, correct your report and revalidate before moving on to certifying. A complete list of the data validations can be found on the Target HIV website. Since we have this congratulations message, we'll go ahead and move on to certify. To get there, select certify in the navigation panel on the left side of the screen. On the certify report page, you'll be required to enter a comment in the text box and click the box underneath, indicating that you certify that the information is accurate. All RSR comments are reviewed, so be sure to add any meaningful feedback you have about your submission. Your comment could be about a suggestion for next year's RSR, or it could address something within this year's report. Finally, click the Certify Report button, and your report will advance to certified status. We do encourage recipients to try and certify their recipient reports as soon as possible after the RSR web system opens. It's important to note that providers cannot submit their own RSR provider reports and client level data until their recipients certify their RSR recipient report. So we have now made it through all the components required for the 2023 RSR recipient report. Before I finish today's webinar, let's take a look at some upcoming webinars, as well as the RSR and technical assistance resources available to help you with your 2023 submission. As previously mentioned, the GCMS is available year round for contract revision. The RSR recipient report opens on December 4th of this year. The recipient report deadline is February 5th, 2024, and also marks the opening of the 2023 RSR provider report. As a reminder, providers will not be able to submit their provider reports until the recipient report is in certified status. March 4th, 2024 is the target deadline for the RSR provider report. Completing this report early allows the recipient more time to check for completeness and return the report for changes if necessary. March 18th is the final day for recipients to return their provider's reports for changes. And the final RSR deliverable is due on Monday, March 25th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Any report not in submitted status by that time will be marked as late in the EH fees, and no extensions will be granted. This timeline can be viewed and downloaded at any time on the Target HIV website. 
Here are some of the upcoming webinars that will be useful in completing the RSR. On November 29th, you can join in for an introduction to Trax, a helpful tool used for creating the RSR client level data XML file. On December 6th is a summary of the 2022 RSR data. The links for these webinars will take you directly to the registration pages for them. So if you still need to register, you can do so from here or on the Target HIV website. The rest of the RSR webinar series should be up soon on the Target HIV website as well. Let's review some technical assistance resources available to assist you during the RSR submission. The Ryan White Data Support Team addresses RSR-related content, submission questions, interpretation of the RSR instruction manual, and HABs reporting requirements. They also assist with instructions for completing the RSR recipient and provider reports and data validation questions. The DISC team addresses questions for those needing assistance in extracting data from their systems and reporting the data using the required XML schema. They also offer TA on the tracks application, data reporting requirements, and data quality issues. The EHB's Customer Support Center provides assistance with the EHBs, including RSR software-related questions, EHB's navigation, registration, access, and permissions. For our CareWare users, the CareWare Help Desk will be your best resource. The CareWare Help Desk can assist you with generating XML files from CareWare and also help create custom reports. I would encourage all CareWare users to sign up for the listserv. Finally, we also have the login.gov help center. If you need any assistance with setting up or managing your login.gov account to be able to access the EHBs and the RSR, you can always give them a call. If you are unsure of who to call, feel free to contact any one of the resources provided and they will be able to direct you to the appropriate place. The Target H Heavy website is the best place to find all of your TA materials, such as the 2023 RSR Instruction Manual and the RSR Data Dictionary. You can also join the DISC listserv to be informed about all things RSR. And then the HRSA HAB website is the place to go for policy notices and HAB information. PCN 1602 can be found on that website which is the list of definitions for all core medical and support services. And finally, to connect with and find out more about HRSA, check out hrsa.gov. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for joining us on today's presentation, and I will now turn it back over to Hunter for the Q&A portion of the webinar.